story of us, I would say, kind of goes back to my 20s. I, I went through my 20s um, being kind of really in tune to a lot of what uh, God maybe wanted to do, um, but not paying attention to almost any of it. It was all about me. And about a year into that, um, I had gone back um, to uh, my church, met uh, this guy Shane Farmer, and um, we kind of connected right off the bat. Really short after that meeting, um, he asked me if I wanted to come help and work and lead in, in this ministry. I was almost never single. Always had to be with somebody, and actually at that time was still dating someone. We broke up. It was one of the first times in my 20s that I wasn't trying to date. And I was happy, and I was having a good time. I didn't know what God was doing, and I wasn't even aware that God was really doing anything. I think it set me up for meeting Carrie. Right around that time, I was turning 25. Like, oh my gosh, like the worst, and I was single. I'd been waiting and waiting and not dating. I was um, working constantly so I could just like live in my apartment and be this, you know, artist. God just started telling me, save money. And then the roommate that I'd had needed to move out, <clears throat> get a new place, invited me to come with and something told me, God told me, don't and find a new roommate. So I got a new roommate, then my roommate at the time was dating Ryan's brother and said she come out with us and um, I met Ryan. I had made a decision to try to pursue a uh, the possibility of starting a church in Germany. Shane and I had just been talking and, and that was something that he had felt really passionate about and, and instantly clicked with me. Not knowing Carrie, not knowing any of this, you know, eventually this this night comes at our house. What I do specifically remember is coming into my kitchen and seeing an old friend of mine, Phil, standing there and Carrie was standing there and they were just talking. I, I remember jumping in that conversation and that conversation lasted till like two in the morning. And then we fell in love, like, really fast. It's not like skipping a step or two. No, no, no we'll that's go how back. it happened. No, no joke. It's legit. It is legit. <laughs> we fell in love after, like, a month. And we were like, we're stupid. But we confirmed it. We had, each of us had a mentor in our life, and we were like, uh, is this legit? It all kind of culminates, this is gonna sound crazy, uh, but it culminates with a dream. Uh, I actually knew um, in, in about a month that uh, I loved and, and wanted to marry Carrie. I had this dream that to me solidified it, but I, I took it to a couple people, specifically Shane, and was basically like, dude, I wanna marry her. And I remember him sitting across from me at his desk telling me I would normally like right off the bat, just be like, well, red alert. But he's like, I've been a part of your relationship. I've seen it as it's gone over this last month with her and I fully affirm and support um, your decision. I was just about ready to go to Germany to possibly live. I'm like, I might be this guy's wife. He's gonna move to Germany. The money that I had been saving, I had thought to myself, I have the money, I can go. Realizing that we were going to be in Paris, thought to myself, well, you know, you're in like the most romantic place in the world. This is where I should propose. I bought a ring and towards the end of that trip. We had uh, a date in Paris. Yeah. It was awesome. Went to the Eiffel Tower by nighttime and it's like sparkling at night and he squeezed right really tight and then got down on his knee and popped out a ring and I tearfully said yes. I'm not saying go out there and find a woman and get married in 10 months and life is gonna be great. I was totally being set up to be just in the right place mentally and emotionally and spiritually. There's such a freedom in simply obeying God's voice in your life, knowing it, having people around you that can help you know it, and obeying it. There's power in that for your future. I've grown up in the church and I've always 
uh, been really skeptical. I can tell you, no matter how hard I've prayed, I've never heard God say anything. I don't hear anything audibly, but it is very clear when I do hear it, I, it's like I hear it with my whole body. If I try to push it off or try not to pay attention to it, I physically know that I'm not paying attention. I'm not trying to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, we have this perfect life because no one has a perfect life, but I really believe that I married the right person. I'm not a skeptic anymore. When I hear a story, I, I think to myself like, oh, that's cool, you know, that that happened to that person. They're not just making it up to sound godly or churchly or whatever, that that really does happen to, you know, non-pastors and, and just everyday people. Now, you know, eight years into marriage, yeah, we've been married we... eight years now. And we've had two kids, um, two boys named Marshall and Eli. Who uh, are not here right now, so we're going on a date. <laughs> yes. <laughs>